why would we use aluminium framing to support the glazing, Gary? Good question, Jim. <laughs> well, aluminium has a lot of fantastic properties. It doesn't have to be glass to supporting itself. As I mentioned in the previous move, high strength to weight ratio is one of the great advantages of aluminium. It's a lot lighter than steel, about one third the weight of steel, but it approaches the same strength as mild steel when we use high strength alloys and tempering in the aluminium. Probably the most important part about uh, the reason why we use aluminium extrusions though is that they can be intricate shapes. We can include screw flutes in the aluminium. We can include gasket retainers. We can include clips so that the aluminium extrusions can clip together. The aluminium is a relatively soft metal. It's easily milled and machined without wearing out the uh, steel or carbon steel blades. It's easily drilled. Self-tapping screws will screw straight into the aluminium, similar to putting a screw into timber. So this all leads to efficient and quality assembly. It withstands the elements better than steel. Correct. Aluminium has fantastic corrosion and resistance compared to steel. And one of the great benefits of aluminium is you can get extremely high quality finishes applied to the aluminium in factory conditions. Anodized aluminium, polyester powder coated finishes, and PVF three, PVF two, sorry, paint finishes, which are high quality durable paint finishes, are the three most common finishes used on aluminium in architectural applications. One thing to keep in mind though with anodized finishes is that different alloys and different, um, even different mills the aluminium come from have different com a chemical composition in the aluminium which lead to different colours to the aluminium. In this slide you can see the aluminium sheet which has been welded to some extrusions has a completely different finish. It has an anodised finish. Anodised is a natural finish. Right, hence the colour variation. Correct. If an architect is designing with an anodized finish, particularly to aluminium sheet, which has a very varied appearance in, um, in the finished product, the architect must keep in mind and embrace the fact that anodizing is a natural finish and you could get some patchwork quilt similar to this building in the slide. This is Brisbane Square at the top of the mall. If I had a project near the, the water, what type of finish would you recommend? Anodized finishes are a natural oxide that's applied to the surface of the aluminium. So in effect, you're already promoting a corrosion of the aluminium to achieve the anodized finish. That aluminium oxide that forms as the finish on anodized aluminium is the most corrosive resistant finish that you can apply to an aluminium product. Fantastic for seaside environments. Good to know. Now that we've decided that aluminium is a better product to work with rather than glass, the framing of the windows. Let's have a look at the two main framing systems, window wall and curtain wall that were mentioned in the earlier session. So what is window wall and what is curtain wall? Window wall, as the name suggests, is a window that fits within an opening in the structure. It spans from the floor of the building to the suffit and just mounts within each floor, filling that void. Where it goes between the slabs. Correct. Whereas curtain wall is, as the name suggests, a curtain. It's like a veil of a facade that shrouds the entire envelope of the building and covers over the edge of the surface of the so structure. So it hangs on the outside. Exactly, as a curtain hangs, as the name suggests. In this slide, you'll see on the left a cross section of a window wall showing how the window is mounted in between each floor opening. And on the right hand side is a section through a curtain wall showing how the curtain wall spans completely down the face of the building like a curtain hanging on the outside of the structure. Here's some short slides to show you the step-by-step -step process of how a window wall and a curtain wall is installed so as you can see the difference between the two. The window wall has subframe mounted around each floor opening so as the window can be sealed to each floor. Whereas the curtain wall just has a simple bracket mounted on each floor to allow the panels to be hung on the outside. The panels are installed, as shown, the window wall fits within the opening, the curtain wall 
covers over the edge of the slab and encompasses the whole of the outside of the envelope of the building. All the panels are installed and I've included the detail there, which is often asked during the lectures of how the curtain wall panels are mounted to the structure. That bracket must be very important. It is. Each curtain wall panel is supported by one bracket only, so it's free to expand horizontally and vertically to take into account all building movements and temperature movements within the overlapping mullions and gutter joints and the seals of the curtain wall. For this reason, curtain wall provides a high, higher weather performance rating than the typical window wall. There's no penetrations through the facade. Whereas a window wall has slab edges and protrusions coming through, creating potential water leaks at every one of those interfaces between the window wall and the structure. However, curtain walls aren't necessarily the only option. Window walls do have advantages in use in particular applications. For example, short buildings, which require scaffolding around the outside of the building to provide safety for the construction workers. Yes. That prevents the launching and the installation of the curtain wall outside the edge of the structure. So for short buildings, window wall installation is typically the quicker method and therefore, for program reasons, the ideal glazing system. What would the majority of residential high-rise buildings be? That depends on the construction method. Many of them are a window wall system because the builder is trying to push to get the building completed earliest possible time frame. The screen of the building as it traverses up the building must be out of the way before the curtain wall can be installed. So typically a window wall installation happens while the screens are still in place before they have lifted, whereas the curtain wall happens under the screens and there's that lag period of about four or five weeks before the construction site is available for a curtain wall installation. However, for very tall buildings, curtain wall installation is quite often quicker. So curtain wall and window wall is quite a complex decision which needs to be discussed with the builders and the client. So each has their merits and obviously cost effectiveness would also be made different from project to project. Absolutely. Here's a question for you Gary. There's a photo there of Green Square building in Fortitude Valley. Can you tell me whether that's curtain wall or window wall on that building? Good question Jim. Uh, it looks like half the building is curtain wall and the other part with the predicted facade is window wall. Is that correct? Yeah, not as dumb as all glazing people are, but I thought, yeah, you picked it up through your early question there, Gary. This building has a, a combination of both window wall, where you see the flush facade that traverses over the edge of the slab, and other parts of the building use window wall, where they're creating a feature the slab edge protruding through the glazing to create a sunshade structure. Yeah, very effective. Well, that concludes this video and our next video will be looking at different types of spandrel treatments.